Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahbihi ajma'in wa ba'd So this audio inshallah is just as a further clarification Because uh, with the Sajid's video There was a lot that, uh, that the brother had to read through uh, Going through like a tafsir Ibn Kathir And uh, the tafsir of uh, Shaykh Al-Uthaymeen Rahimahullah uh, in regards to these ayat in Surah Al-Ma'idah because the problem is that these the majority of the people they only like to focus on the ayat الْكَافِرُونَ and they forget that there are two other people mentioned in 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 these verses which is فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الظَّالِمُونَ فَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْفَاسِقُونَ all right and we know that the dhalimun these are oppressors and this is dhum duna dhum this is not the dhum that takes a person out of the religion, and this is and the fisk here that's mentioned is of course fisk. It comes from خروج uh, الطاعة, because فسقا it has the meaning of خرج in the Arabic language. You know, for فسقا أمر ربه, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is talking about iblis for فسقا أمر ربه, that he left out on the obedience of the commands of his Lord. All right, so the fasik on here is of course the fisk dun al fisk, which means that the person is this is not the fisk that takes a person. Again, out of Islam. This is the fisk that makes a person a sinful person. And the dhalim also makes the person a sinful sinful person. It requires the person to make tawbah. And dhalim is because he's being a sinful person, but he's oppressing other than himself. Which requires that that person, he has to not only make tawbah from his actions, but also he has to make amends with the people that he's oppressed. All right, But they don't mention the other two people and when does this apply. So in every scenario for these people, if the ruler makes any mistake in regards to uh, ruling by the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of his messenger, then the person is just automatically out of Islam. Which is, uh, this is this is the whole issue and this is why we continue to to press them on this issue. So the point is, is that uh, because of the time restraints on Sajid's video, he was only able to use a certain amount of, uh, you know, from the tafsir, the main, the main points from the tafsir, the tafsir bin Kathir, and also from the tafsir of Sheikh al Uthaymeen. And of course, I can sit here and, and I can go through all the tafsir. We can go through Ibn Jarir, we can go through Qurtubi. But the thing is, is a person who has like, uh, that his heart is still healthy. He doesn't need all that. He, he just needs a quick, he needs an understanding. This is the way that the Salaf understood it. And he'll accept that. But these people, you know, you know, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned about them, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغُونَ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ بِتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَبِتِغَاءَ تَعْوِيلِ وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَعْوِيلَهُ إِلَى اللَّهِ وَالْرَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ يَكُولُونَ آمَنَّ بِهِ كُلُّ مِنْ عِنْدِ رَبِّنَا So as far as these people that, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has, has caused their hearts to stray and become corrupt, they want to follow the things that aren't clear instead of following the things that are clear because we all know anybody that studied Asul al-Fiqh, you understand that you have, you know, a Dalil al-Jali or Dalil al-Khafi. You have the Mujmal, you have the Mubayyan. You have, you know, the Mujmal is uh, the, the what needs to be explained. The Mubayyan is is uh, the clear-cut type of a Dalil. Like once you read it, you understand it. So they like to use the Mujmal and they use they they, they like to use the Ahadith al ahadith al -ama. You know, these general, the, the, the Ahadith that have a general meaning so they can try to try to twist it to their to their to their whims and ways you know and their whims and desires basically uh but if you notice that every time that we are refuting them focus on the focus on the evidence that's presented i know this is going to be difficult for people that haven't studied but every time that we we go back and forth with these characters is that you know every all the evidence that we're presenting is you know jali it's you know it's it's, it's mubayyan it's clear, you know, and then you can go back to the, the Kalam of the Salaf and, uh, you know, and see exactly what their speech is about the evidence, you know. But here with them, they, they come and they try to twist things, you know. So these are the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغَ And زَيْغَ is that their, their hearts have just become corrupted and messed up and twisted and, and misguided. فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْهُ You know, so they follow these these things, these unclear things. And, and on top of that, what makes it worse is that they don't have a background in Islamic knowledge. They never studied. I, I'm willing to, to guarantee that the majority of these people cannot even quote three ahadith in Arabic from their memory and explain them. 
you know, much less go go through the ahadith and give the takhrij and give the hukum on and give like different fawaid and different things that you could take from the ahadith and what is the kalam of the ulama about these ahadith. I, I forget that. I, if they could just even quote three hadiths from their memory in Arabic language, in the Arabic language with the takhrij and the sahabi and everything, I, I would be shocked. I would be shocked. And I, I think three is asking too much. So these people, they don't have a background in Islamic knowledge, but on top of that, they want to go follow the things that are like, you know, the you know the shabah, you know, so like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Fama Ladina fi kulubihim zayg. And this is the characteristic of the people whose heart is corrupt. It's corrupt, it's sick, it's twisted, it's misguided. So what what they're trying to do is they they they're they're doing this and they're following these things, seeking for it to cause discord. And that's exactly what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about them. That they 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 do this and they focus on these these types of uh, these types of issues that are unclear and because they don't and uh, you know they're unclear to the to, to you know there's difference of opinion amongst the the ulama of of the deen much less now what are you talking about these people have never studied Islam in their lives you know they studied like maybe they studied you know with some 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 Dio Bandi guy in a in an Islamic center, you know, and then they call themselves Tulab al or Shiuch or what? Nah, Some people can't even. Like I said, they don't even. They don't even. And they haven't read these books. They haven't done this type of research. So now Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says about them Ibn Dhaal al Fitna that they're doing this to cause discord, to cause dissension, to cause split amongst the people. They're the ones that break up the unity of the people when they when they go against the truth. You know Ibn Dhaal You know, trying to find the interpretation for things. That there's no interpretation to, you know. So, and this is what they try to. And, and here, in this case, they try to interpret things in their own way, not the interpretation of the salaf, not the interpretation of how the people understood it from before, you know, not the interpret. And, and even so far to the point where they try to say that, oh, you know, that that the ruler today is not like the ruler, like Al Hajjaj. Al Hajjaj was the most oppressive ruler. Al Hajjaj would kill a person for making a mistake in the Arabic language. So how, like, what oppressive ruler do you have on the face of the earth that will do something like that today? Al-Hajjaj was the most oppressive ruler, and the Sahaba were alive. There were not all the Sahaba, but there were Sahabiyun. And Anas ibn Malik was one of them, and he told the people when they wanted to make khuruj on him, he said, Isbiru. And this is a hadith, and they can go back and read the hadith. But then they want to say, no, the, the rulers today are worse than Al-Hajjaj. Wallahi, ya khiyar, wallahi, man. Adhalu min himar ahlihim, wallah. Well, these people have no knowledge of, of, of history. They have no knowledge of anything. Show me one ruler today that's worse than Al-Hajjaj. You know, because the people go and celebrate Halloween. Yeah, Halloween is from the Kaba'ir. And it's meant to shabbah bil qawmi for who minhum. You know, and that doesn't, that's not a statement of takfir. It just means that whoever, whoever impersonates the people, that, that these are the people that he'll be, you know, raised up with. If he doesn't make toba before his death. If you love a people, you, you're raised up amongst those people on the day of judgment. You're raised up with the people that you love. So you love the Quran and the Sunnah, inshallah. You know, you die on that love for the Quran and the Sunnah. Inshallah, you get raised up with the people on the day of judgment. You'll be amongst the people that were that had love for the Quran and the Sunnah. You know, if you if you have love for other than people, you know, you had this stuff in your hearts. But that's, like I said, that's a sin. These are sinful people. You know, the government should not allow these, these holidays of the Kufar to, to be celebrated in their countries. But again, if they are celebrated, it's sinful. Don't they still celebrate, uh, what is it, Nehruz or what is it, in, in, in Persia, in, in Iran? They were celebrating it even in the time of the Salaf. And the Salaf were like making an card on them for that, but nobody may take fear of them for that. Go go find one one uh, one one narration where somebody was celebrating Nehruz uh, and, uh, and they may take fear of them for celebrating the holiday. So Allah must I. We're not and so celebrating is one thing. Now having there at the card of something is a whole different thing. Now, for example, like some, somebody putting up a Christmas tree and giving presents, of course the person's sinful. But now if he has this whole at card of Isa and the belief in Jesus, and now that's a whole different story. Now that's his aqidah. We're just talking about the people celebrate. They're definitely sinful. And this definitely should never happen. Inside of a Muslim country. No Muslim country should be celebrating the holidays of the Kufar. They don't celebrate our holidays. You're not going to go to America and then they're going to give you a day off for Eid. And they might they might give you an unpaid day off, but they're not going to celebrate with you. They're not going to put candy out for you for Eid. Allah, Allah Maybe they might do that in certain places where there's a lot of Muslims, but 
Nah, they're not celebrating our holidays, and we're definitely not going to celebrate theirs. And any person that does that, they need to make toba. So this is not an issue about celebrating Halloween. They, they need to get that. They, <laughs> if they continue talking about that, then that just goes to show you that they have nothing. So these are the types of people that we're dealing with. You know, the people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because of the corruption in their heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has caused that corruption to increase. So what I'm going to do now, inshallah, is I'm going to go and read through all of the speech of Sheikh Uthaymeen, rahimahullah, the, the stuff that Sajid, he could not put in the video due to time restraints. So the people can see in its entirety uh, exactly what Sheikh Uthaymeen is saying. So he said, وَلَكَنْ لِيَعْلَمَ أَنَّ مَنْ لَمْ يَحْكُمْ بِمَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ إما أن يكون لطمع وإما أن يكون لكفر بما أنزل الله وإما أن يكون لعدوان وظلم على الغير. So here he mentioned three scenarios. He said that uh, the people not ruling by what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala has sent down is in generally it's in three scenarios. One is because of greed, that the person he just love for dunya. He just he wants wealth. He said, you know, that's the first scenario. He said another one is for the person he has a dis disbelief in what Allah Subhanahu wa Taala sent down. And the third one he said وإما أن يكون لعدوان وظلم so in this case, he has enmity and he wants to oppress another person. So he rules other than what, by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. But his, 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 the, the reason for it is because of hatred for another person. And it's not because he's, he, view, he views that as being better. So here we have the Fasuk, we have the Kafir, and we have the Dhalim. Okay, and he's going to go and explain these different people. See, for, he said, فَإِنْ كَانَ لِطَمَعٍ فَإِنَّهُ فَاسِقٍ So he said if it's for greed, then he's Fasuk. He's, he's, he's a... He's a He's a corrupt Muslim. All right. He's a corrupt Muslim. He's a fasuk. He's a disobedient. Kakadin tanaza indahu rajulani fa atahu ahadahuma rishwatin fa hakama bi gaida ma anzalallah. Talabin la rishwati wa tamari. Wa hada nakulu indahu fasuk. And he, then he gave the example of a judge that two people came to him with a, with a dis, disputing amongst each other. So he, one of the people, one of the two, uh, gave him a, a bribe, rishwa, which is a bribe. So he, he judged for the guy that gave him the bribe because he wanted the money, you know. So he went against the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this guy was the oppressor. And he ruled in favor of the oppressor because of his love for money. He said, this person we say about him, that he's a fasiq. That he's a, he's, a, he's a disobedient person. He's a corrupt individual. Athani rajalun taqasama ilayhi rajulani. وَكَانَ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَ أَحَدِهِمَا عَدَاوَةً فَحَكَمَ عَلَيْهِ وَالْحَقُ مَعَهُ نَقُولُ هَذَا الظَّالِمٌ مُعْتَدِي لَيْسَ لَهُ غَرَضٌ فِي الْحُكْمِ عَلَيْهِ لَكِنْ يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَنْتَقِيمَ مِنْهُ لِأَنَّهُ يَقْرَأُهُ يَقْرَأُهُ أَوْ بَيْنَهُ وَبَيْنَهُ سُوءُ التَّفَاهُمِ وَهَذَا أَعْظَمُ وَأَشَدُّ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِ لِأَنَّ الْأَوَّلَ لَهُ مَنْفَعَةٌ no, I'm just trying to fix the page now. Uh, لَهُ مَنْفَعَةٌ قَدْ تَدْعُو النَّفْسَ إِلَيْهَا أما الثاني فليس له غرض إلا العدوان فهو أشد وعظم بلا شك. So he said this one is a uh, two people they go to a person in, with a dispute, and uh, but the 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 person who's judging in the dispute, the judge, he has uh, enmity and hatred and problems with one of the people, two people that are in the dispute. So he judges in favor of the person that's that's not. Uh, but the haq is with the person. You know, the right is with the person that he had, that the judge has a problem with. So he judges in favor of the other person out of hatred and, and enmity for that person that he doesn't like, even though the haq is with him. So this person, he, he ruled by something that other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. But he didn't do it out of, you know, despise for what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did. Uh, he, he doesn't despise it. He doesn't think that it's not correct. But he's only doing this out of enmity and hatred for this person. He said, like in your reading, yan takamino. He just wants to get revenge from this person. Leano yakrahu, because he hates him. Wabeno wabeno suat to faham. And they have a misunderstanding between them. He said, Wahada a'dham wa ashadam in al He said, This is greater and more severe than the first one, which is the fasiq. You know? Leana al awa lahu manfa. Because the first one he has, he, he gains a benefit. You know, he gets money. Even though he's, you know, he gets a big sin, major sin. But he, you know, he at least benefits something. Whereas this guy, he benefits nothing. All he does is he's just trying to find a cure for his hatred for this person. So he said that this is worse than the first scenario. The first scenario of the fasik, now you have the dhalim. He said, 
So he said the third thing is to 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 rule by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down and you despise because you despise what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down. You don't see it as being correct. You don't re, you don't respect it. Aw i'tiqad minhu anna ma hakama bihi khayrun min min hukm Allah azza wa jalla. Or that you have the belief that what you judge by, your judgment is better than the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Aw annahu mukhayyirun bayna an yahkuma bima anzal Allah aw bi ghayri ma anzal Allah. So so he said in the third case, he said that the person is mutakhayr. There's no pressure on him. There's no pressure on him from anybody. He has a choice to choose to order to, to rule by something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down or something that other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. And he chooses and he chooses the thing, the, the man-made laws over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's laws. He said, uh, because he hates Islam. Or because he thought there's something other than the Islam and the rulings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down is better than it. Or that he thought that something else is on the same level. That there's something similar. Like so he, he's either doing one of three one of three things. And this this this, of course, how would you know this? If a person ruled by something other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, how would you know this? You'd have to go and sit down with the person to find this answer. Is he doing it out of pressure from the people? Is he doing it because of uh, fear? Is he doing it out of something? You don't know until you go and sit down and talk to the person, right? So, but these people, they, they're so swift to just make this hukum of takfir and that, you know, that they need to be rebelled against and all this stuff without actually going down. How would you know if the person was was ruling by something other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down? And of course, Sheikh Hothamim is going to speak about this. This part about the danger of making being swift to, to make this judgment is the last part of this tafsir of this ayah and that uh, Sajid actually mentioned that in the that was in the video all right that was in the video that Sajid it was the last part of the video where Sajid was mentioning the quote from Sheikh Uthaymeen was the last part of this tafsir so that's why I'm going over the first part so you can go back and listen to that inshallah we'll go over it also he said وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ مِنَ اللَّهِ حُكْمًا لِقَوْمٍ يُوْكِنُونَ so who is you know, and who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in judgment, in hukman, you know, to pass judgment, in you know, for the people that have certainty. And of course, these are the people of Tawheed. These are the people of Tamasuk with Kitab with Sunnah. He said, لا أحد أحسن من الله حكمن. فإذا حكم, So nobody is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in judgment. So the, the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down in the Quran and the Sunnah is the best for all people. It's the uh, aslah. You know, it's the most uh, suitable for all the people. And it's, it's what's going to bring us, uh, bring about all the sa'ada that we can have in the, this life and the next life. It's through judging by what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. No doubt. But now when we talk about, and we're not saying that a person who judges by it other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. Again, that this issue is not about whether or not the person is making a mistake. He's making a mistake. The issue about, is about whether or not it's permissible now to rebel against him and make takfir of him because of that. So he said, "The hakama who he is told that he is the one who 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 is the one the judgment is by something that other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. who is the one who is the one who is the one who is the one who is the the judgment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. one who is the 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 one so he's lied about what this ayat contains. And he said, well, And it's the same ayat he quotes it again. So who is better than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in judgment and in making judgments and making legislation? So he said if he believes that it's better, like what he's judging with is better than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down, then he is he is more evil and uh, more aqbah, like qabih. It's just like ugly. It's just like completely ugly. You know, and uh, so like he's just basically he's more evil. And what he's doing is more, is is more, for, uh, is further from the truth. Min alladhi qala innu masawan lahu. Then the person who says it is similar. Like he puts something, some man-made judgment, man -made judgment on the same level. As the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Like these people, like a, a person who might take like a constitution of a country and put it at the same level that we're going to rule uh, by the constitution just like we rule by the Quran and the Sunnah. And he puts it on the same level as the Quran and the Sunnah, that person's a kafir. There's no doubt. But again, you have to go in and you have to check 
and talk to the person to see if that's the reason. You don't just make the hukum. You don't jump up, and especially no guy that, that never studied Islam and sat in America his whole life, you know, studying secular education. We're not going to take the judgment from that person. That's from amongst the ulama that will sit down with the person and go over the reasons of why he did why he did that, because we're going to get to that in a minute, inshallah. He said, So he said, if a person says, uh, you know, if a, if, a, if a person asks, So these are the disbelievers, right? And this goes back to the people who judge by other than what Allah SWT, these are the disbelievers. So the issue here that Shaykh Hudaymin is bringing up is, is, is the person a disbeliever in that ruling itself, or is he a disbeliever completely? That he leaves Islam completely. Now focus on this. Now the disbeliever in that act, like, you know, he did an act of disbelief, but he is he himself is not a disbeliever. This is the kufr duna kufr. All right. And then in the other scenario, fima hakamu fi awal kafirun kharijun anil mila. Or is he from, you know, kufr al-akbar, which means that it does this take him completely out of the religion. And he said, al-jawab, the answer. Hadha mahalu khilafin wa qad taqaddam. فَمِنَ <تصفيق> وقيل هم الكافرون أي الموصوفون بالكفر المخرج عن الملة ولكن الأدلة دلت على أن هذا مقيد بالشروط. Okay, so now, so he said that there is this is this is the محل محل الخلاف that this is the place where the people differed. All right, وقد تقدم and he mentioned that this is this is previous, but he's going to go over it now. He said from so he said from amongst the scholars are the people that said فأولئك هم الكافرون this is only in his hukum. That he's like, that the, 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 only, but, they, but they're still Muslims. And then he, he quotes the hadith of the Prophet He said, Ithnani fin nasi huma bihim kufr. He said, two people, two people, uh, two, two from amongst the people that they have kufr. That this is an act of kufr, but this is not kufr that takes a person out of the middle. This is kufr, doing a kufr. And the, the, the people who, who like insult a person's lineage, you know, they, they do a ta'an fin nasab. And this is the woman who weeps and cries very loud and rips her and rips the, the, the front part of her shirt and, and 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 makes dua on herself whenever, you know, over and she does this over a dead person. So these people are like fihim kufr. But this is kufr duna kufr. He said, in these actions, they do not take a person out of Islam. So in this, in this meaning, that, that means that they're only kafirun in, the, in, the, in what they judge with, only. But not that they are kafirun, and he, the, 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 this is, does not take them out of Islam completely. That they're not, that they haven't left the religion. kafirun, And then the other group amongst the ulama, they say, هم الكافرون أي الموصون في الموصوفون بالكفر. That these are the people that are, you know, described with الكفر. المخرج عن الملة. The, 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 the kufr that takes a person out of the religion. ولكن الأدلة دلت على أن هذا مقيد مشروط. But the, but the evidence, going back to, the, the, to these ayat and the different ahadith, it goes back to show that this is, uh, that, that you can only make the takfir on, on these people with certain conditions. That certain conditions have to be met. And then he goes over the conditions. He said, Al-awwal an yakun al-hakimu aliman bi hukm al All right, he said that the, that the ruler has to be knowledgeable of the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There can't be any doubt. There can't be a ta'wil. There can't be a misunder misinterpretation. And he has to have full knowledge of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. All right. Wa thani an yakun aliman aliman bi mukhalafati hadha al-hukm li hukm al That he also has to be knowledgeable of how his judgment and the judgment that he's judging by goes against the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the judgment of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how it contradicts it or goes against it, contrasts it, or whatever the case may be. He has to have knowledge of how it, how, you know, how it goes against that evidence. If he, if he doesn't have that knowledge because he's you know, misinterpreting, uh, misinterpreting the evidence or because he has another person 
like a, a maybe a scholar that's next to him that's misinterpreting the evidence and he's trusting that person and that will not take the person out of Islam. He said, وَثَارِثُ أَنْ يَجَعَلَهُ بَدِيلًا أَنْ حُكْمِ اللَّهِ And this it means that he exchanges it. That he, that he replaces the judgment of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completely with his own judgment or a, a judgment of another person. Some man may law. Because he, he doesn't, and of course the badil is showing that you see that what you're replacing it with is better than what you're, what you're, repla what you're the replacement is better than what's being replaced. And this is what badil means in the Arabic language for these juhal that don't seem to understand because they keep quoting like uh, Sheikh Salif Ozan and Sheikh Salif Ozan constantly in every statement that he made that he made about this that the person who makes kufr he's a uh, you badil you badil and the tabdil it means that you're replacing it and what you're replacing it with you have the belief that what you're replacing it with is better than what's being replaced because why would you replace it so again this goes back to the earlier part about you know seeing something as being better like a man-made judgment as being better than the judgment of Allah then in this case, yes, the person leaves Islam. So in the, the fourth one is that he's not pleased with the judgment of Allah. You know, he said, no, no, I, I'm not pleased with it. This this is not suitable for, for our times, and this is not this is not going to work, and this is not the right judgment in this scenario or in this case. In any, any of these cases, again, but these are four conditions. And, all, and here he's going to say, فَإِذَا تَمَّتْ هَذِهِ الشُّرُوطِ so if these four conditions are met, then the person has left Islam. Now, where are these four conditions met in the rulers today? And, and who's going to pass the judgment? Daniel? Ali Dawa? Are these people going to pass the judgment on the ruler? Are we going to sit back in Al-Andalusi? Al 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 these people that are sitting, and sitting, sitting in the West, far, 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 far away from these lands, haven't even lived in these countries. These individuals have not even lived in the countries. And the people that have lived in the countries, they're calling them bootlickers. They're calling them this. The people that have actually lived in these countries and studied in these countries and sat with the ulama of these countries, they don't want to take the, they, they, they want to judge. And they've never lived in these countries. They're living far, 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 far away from the countries. They got problems in their own communities, but they want to sit here and talk about the rulers in Saudi Arabia. So I asked them, have they, have, they, have these four conditions been met with these rulers? And uh, you, you know, and who's, who's, who's supposed to be the judge of that? You know? Daniel with his Harvard degree in secular education and his master's degree in philosophy that he only studied like all the time that he spent in his education was amongst Kufar. So he's, he's supposed to make the judgment and we're supposed to listen to that. Nah, that, that judgment is made by the ulama, not by not by some juhal that are sitting in the West with a YouTube following, making, you know, content makers, basically YouTubers. Allahumma sta'an and Twitter, you know, you know, Twitter sheikhs and and, and 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 YouTubers, you know, they just sit around making content that they don't have knowledge and they're not spreading knowledge. So he continues, Sheikh Hudaymin continues. He said, السُّ <laughs> So he said, whoever judges by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down, but he's not knowledgeable. He doesn't know if he thinks that maybe what he's ruling by is from Allah. He said, because his ignorance, he's ignorant. He doesn't know the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this scenario. So he judges by what he thinks is the best judgment in that situation with ignorance of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down. And he said, now the per this person is not disbelieved. He said, He said, from the conditions of passing the judgment of disbelief on a person, that a person has to be knowledgeable. Alim. Alim, it means that, you know, you, there's a difference between arif and alim. So the, the ulama, they made this distinction between ma'rifa and ilm. Ma'rifa, it means that you have a surface understanding. Ilm, it means that you have, uh, you, you have knowledge of details, like you, you have a detailed understanding of this issue. Again, if he just has ma'rifa, then that's not ilm. He has to have ilm. He has yakun aliman, which means that he has to know the details of this hukum. If he doesn't know the details, then you can't pass the judgment of kufr on this person. 
He said, فَكَيْفَ إِذَا حَكَمَ بِتَعْوِيلٍ مِنْ مَنْ حَرَّفَ الْكَلِمَةَ أَمَّوَاضِ So he said, what about the person now who judges by other than what Allah SWT sent down because of a misinterpretation from a, from a corrupt scholar, from a scholar who misunderstood the evidence, and then he told the person, this is what Allah SWT said, or this is what the Prophet SAW said, and he trusted that person because he's not, a knowledge, he's not knowledgeable of the religion, but he has a person who's like a religious advisor that he goes back to, and this person gave him the wrong interpretation of the Dalil, and he judges by that. He said, He said, this person, he has a, he has a stronger, a much stronger uh, excuse. And he's further, further away from, from, from anybody being able to pass judgment of uh, Kufr on this person. And most of the people now, if, when, the, when they make that comparison of Al-Hajjaj and the ulama, not the ulama, I'm sorry, the, the hukam of today, the rulers of today, Al-Hajjaj was knowledgeable of the religion. He had knowledge of the religion. He knew that he, he probably knew the Adilla better than a lot, the vast majority of the Muslims today, the ulama of the Muslims today. So to sit there and say that the, the situation is the same, the rulers today, like most of the people, most of the people are ignorant. So if ever on the time of the face of this earth that we were making excuses for people, it should be now. Because we live in a time where the ulama are qalil, very few. In the time of Al-Hajjaj, you had Sahaba that were still teaching. Anas ibn Malik was still teaching. <coughs> you had the Kibar tabi'in that were teaching. There's no excuse for ignorance at that time. If we're going to make an excuse for ignorance, we would make it for our time now. For the rulers of our time, we would make that excuse. But no, the people want to flip it. They want to do taqlib al-haqaiq. And this is what I want you to pay attention to because this is always a trait of the Hezbis. The trait of the Hezbis is that they always, always, always do taqlib al-haqaiq, which means they make the truth falsehood and the falsehood truth. They flip everything. They flip the, they flip the, they flip the truth. So now, what do they do now? You look at it now. Now they want to call the people warning against the Khawarij. They want to call them Khawarij. What is this? This is from the, this is, this is what the Dajjal does. And this is the, the sifat of the Dajjajila. You know, so this is, these are people that we should not even take seriously. People need to start looking at the qualifications of a person. Look at the, is this person even qualified to even speak about these issues at all? And of course, Daniel's not qualified. Ali Dawa is not qualified. This guy Rial is not qualified. And, and Andalusi is not qualified. And all these other YouTubers are not qualified. These people that sit here and just spread fitna amongst the, amongst the masses and spread confusion. If a person comes and speaks Quran and Sunnah, and it's very clear, it clears up everything. It clears the air. But then one of these Ashabu Dalala, Ashabu Taqlib al haqaiq these people that flip the truth, they come and they open their mouths and now they confuse everybody. They confuse everybody. So there was no confusion. So now, who is breaking up the unity of the Muslims? And who now, if anybody who's, who's sowing discord amongst the Muslims, who has more right to, to have these bad thoughts about them that, they, that they're working for government agencies? Because we know that the one thing that the government agencies, they want to, to sow discord, they want to split the people and get the people going against each other. All right, going against each other. And they mainly want the people to not take the people of the Sunnah seriously. All right, it's always been that they, you know, uh, like they, they spread the dawah of the Khawarij, spread the dawah of uh, the deal bandi, spread the dawah, but don't, but what, do whatever you can do just to destroy the dawah of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah. And the dawah of Ahlul Sunnah with Jama'ah has always been under attack from these people. So that's why you, you always have to go back and ask the people for the qualifications. And it's an often repeated statement. It's in the Muqaddimah of Sahih Muslim. And in the Muqaddimah of Sahih Muslim, he brought a statement by Muhammad ibn Sirin. Okay, this knowledge of this religion is deen. This is something that we are on. You know, that this is how we, this is, this is the path that we're on to get, to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to do, to, to carry out His commands and to stay away from His prohibition. This is the knowledge that we're, that we're taking. Fanduru. So look, amman ta'khudun deenakum. So pay, pay, pay close, close and meticulous attention to who you take your religion from. Are you taking your religion from some content maker on YouTube that has a secular education and never lived and studied amongst the ulama? Are you taking your deen from the people who went and struggled and strived in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he gave, they gave up the dunya and they went to, to, to learn their religion 
and study the religion and put in years and years and years of work studying the religion. Who are you going to take your religion from? So if you choose to take your religion from these cartoons on YouTube, these people that just run around and speak without any knowledge and twist the evidence, then that's your choice. But I'm telling the people and I advise the people to be very, very weary of who you take your religion from and start asking these people for their qualifications. For a person to come out and make these types of, uh, you know, statements about the hokam being a being a layman. And that's what Daniel is. He's a layman. He's not a he's not a scholar of the religion. Well, I, I, I challenge him and like somebody sit down with him and let him read 10 hadiths from Arba'in and Noahia and see if he can even if he's even memorized that even half of it. Has he memorized half of Arba'in and Noahia? Now he's going to run around and, and make this hukum on the people. Yeah. Can he even read Jews? I'm from his memory. Seriously, if you sit down with him right now, starting from Surah to Naba and going all the way down to Surah to Nas, can, can he even read Jews? I'm from his memory. And now he's going to make this judgment and pass judgment on the hukam of the Muslims. Something for the ulama to do. A layman. Come on, Akhi. Go back to just refuting the feminism and LGBT and, and do what you were known for. Do it, do it, do it. Inshallah, it will benefit you in this life and the next time. And stay away, stay away from knowledge. You're not, you're not a person of knowledge. None of these people, Ali Dao and all these, none of these people are people of knowledge. And so I advise the people to constantly go back and question the people. What are your qualifications? Where did you study? You know, go back. Who are your shiuch? Who, who did you study with? And that goes and that goes for everybody. Okay, I got no issue somebody coming up and asking me where I study. I know where I studied at. I know the scholars that I study with. I don't, I don't have any issues with that. You know, and Sajid also. Sajid, he studied in Medina for nine years. Sat with the ulama. For nine years. So so who who are these people now? Who are these people that never sat with? Name one one scholar that they sat with. One. 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 And don't don't mention some dude in, that's sitting up in some Islamic center in, in America or Canada or Britain. We don't care about that. Those are not scholars. You know, these a lot of these dudes, Akhi, like uh like uh go back and look at the background of these individuals. I'll give an example. So recently, the, the two people that supported uh, Daniel and tried to come out and say that he's Salafi, which is just complete bottle. Uh, he's so far from Salafi, it's not even funny. He's not even close to being Salafi. You had this guy, Kareem Abu Zaid, and then you had Uthman ibn Farouk. They came out in, in a video and tried to like, you know, trying to convince the people that Daniel's Salafi, right? So here, here they go, and uh, trying to convince the people this. And then right after this video, then Daniel goes live stream and starts starts praising the deal bandies saying that they're the people of the sunnah and they're the people that preserve the sunnah it was preserved through them the deal bandies the people that do like you know the <laughs> subhanallah that are like you know taking and uh and doing away with the sma with sifad and making fun of the aqidah of ahl sunnah all online and all this stuff and attacking the sunnah and these these are the people that are preserving the sunnah so now let's look at these two individuals all right kareem abu zaid what's his background Again, start questioning people. Who is he? He's, he, you know, he, does anybody know what he studied in Egypt? He, he, he studied hotel management and tourism. That's his background. It's not a background of knowledge. Who did he study with? Who is, who, who is the ulama? He studied hotel management and tourism. So the thing is, is like, we don't want these car mechanics and restaurant workers that came from overseas to come here and start speaking about the religion and misguiding uh, the people here in America. We have a lot of brothers here from America that went out and studied the religion with ulama for years. These are the people that it should be their responsibility to teach the people, not these YouTubers, not these hotel managers, not these car mechanics, and not all these other individuals. We have a lot of brothers, alhamdulillah, that they went overseas and they studied, but nobody listens to them. So they end up having to go back and work in secular jobs, and then and the knowledge can't be spread. Now what happens is because that because of that gap, so now the people start taking knowledge from these people, car mechanics. You know that's that's what they were. They were making shawarma in their country, and then they come here and they want to talk about Islam. Yeah, he, we know these people, and I'm telling you, I you know go overseas. Anybody that lived overseas, they will know that the people that get the American visas, these are not the religious people. These are not really. They come here and they start acting religious, and because they know the Arabic language, then they start to lead the people astray. They go and they start reading a few books and start saying, "Oh, I'm Salafi, Salafi, Salafi," and then look at all the mistakes they make. Look at all the people that they misguide. They don't have the background of sitting with knowledge, and they're not known for being students of knowledge. Go ask, go overseas, you know, and ask, start asking around about these people. You're not gonna. Nobody knows who they are from the from Ahlul Am. 
from the Tulab al Um. Nobody knows who they are. So the, the whole point is, uh, nah, I mean, people should not be taking their religion from these individuals. This is, this is the, this is the Tamat al Kubra fi, fi zamani hadha. This is the big, big tribulation that we have to be patient with, unfortunately, in this time. You know, we have to be patient with it because, subhanAllah, these people speaking without knowledge, these rawaybidah, uh, like the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned. You know, so uh, go back and follow the advice of Ibn Sirin and look at the people that you take knowledge from. Are you taking knowledge from a person who sat at the feet of the ulama, who, who learned their religion from the ulama for years and years and years of trying to, trying to study and understand and get to the truth? Are you taking your religion from a person who, who studied with kufar and secular education or another guy who was making shawarma in his country and then he came here because he speaks Arabic now he's leading the people astray or maybe he was a football player or you know and then he comes here and then you know because he speaks Arabic you know he came here to you know to play to, to play soccer but now all of a sudden he's Sheikh al-Islam and Taymiyyah who are you taking your religion from so pay attention to that people Allah Musta'an, Allah Musta'an, pay close attention to who you take your knowledge from.